Well, here we are by the pond, and maybe you guys could tell us a little bit about the setup you have here. Uh, sure. So when we were looking for a place, we were wanting something that had some some kind of water source. Uh, we do have a, a couple creeks overall throughout the property, but the, the pond, of course, was something that we were excited about, but the kids were even more excited about, mm -hmm. probably. Um, it's all, all spring-fed, so it, it's uh, coming in on that side, and then there's a, a out tract on that side, outflow tract there. Um, and uh, get a decent bit of water coming through um, to help so it keep it clean. never gets stagnant, which yeah. is really nice. But there's seven springs back in the woods that feed this pond. So it stays nice and clean and um, is always flowing. So it's a great place. The kids love coming out here in the summer, and so do we when it gets hot. After you've been working out in the garden, you come out here and jump in and get all cooled off, and it makes it all worth it, worth it and better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Yeah, you can't beat can't be having a water source. That's no. always nice. And your the actual water in your house, that's from a well, is that correct? It's all well, yes. Gotcha. Yep. Yep. And how, how is your well water? Oh, it's been been great. We didn't we do have to have a filter on it just yep. to keep some of the small dirt and that kind of thing out. But no, it tastes great, works great. Haven't had any issues with it. So. Nice. Can you tell us a little about your house, uh, I've noticed, is a mixture. You have some solar power and then you also are hooked to the grid also. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so it's, you know, it's, it's interesting. I didn't know much about solar and I still don't know a ton about it, but as we were trying to figure out, well, what do we want to get as far as solar goes? What do we want it to, to run? Because there's completely off-grid or there's completely grid tie. And we really wanted some kind of combination of the two. And so it is, it is possible to, to get that combination. So we are, are grid tied. The amount of solar that we get is not enough to, to run the entirety of the house, but we do have the, I guess, quote unquote, essentials connected to it. So our well pump, our septic pump, um, the, uh, the walk-in refrigerator, the cool bot, um, that's all connected to it, as well as some, a string of outlets and lights and two freezers, uh, two freezers connected to it to, to help keep all the, the food storage okay. I'm getting uh, attacked by ducks here, it looks like. Um, so we've got all of that connected, and it's got a battery system too. So if the, if the grid went down, then all of those things that we talked about, plus maybe a couple other things, are all backed up on battery. And so that battery will last for a few days. It can last theoretically indefinitely because the solar could potentially produce enough power to manage that stuff. But most of your power outages are when there's bad weather. Yeah. So um, for the time being, the battery would then run out. And then the idea is to connect the generator to that shortly to where the generator then could cut on if the batteries are dying, recharge the batteries. Um, that's all propane driven. So, so we could go quite some time in theory uh, just running off of a combination of the solar and the and the generator. And even if things got bad for a while, the sun will come out sooner or later. Exactly. Right? You're going to have water and you're going to have your main essentials. You got your refrigeration taken care of. So that's yeah, a great right. setup. Oh yeah, no, it's worked out well. And and you know, I don't know that we get a whole lot of power going back to the grid. If we had more panels, we we would feed the grid more. But but at the very least, it's reducing our our power bill and at least in Virginia, and it's going to vary somewhat state to state, you can get grid tie systems where if you're producing enough energy, it's going back to the power company and they'll pay you for it. Yeah. Um, but it just depends on how many panels you want to kind of invest in. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So here we are in the pantry that's connected to the garage where I store the bulk of stuff um, from canning and putting up from the garden. So we've got the tomatoes and apple juice, the applesauce, peaches, um, some sliced apple pie filling, and then green beans and um, salsa um, from the garden are down below. But something that's been really helpful for us is these shelves are um, really deep and tall. And uh, to optimize on space, we did cinder blocks their side and then um, stuck wood on top of it and that allows us to get two shelvings deep so they're with a cinder block it's perfect size for your quart jars to go underneath it and then it's perfect for putting the half gallons on top and um, of course you can do the quartz as, on quartz as well um, but it's just really optimizes storage as long as you've got enough support here because the cinder blocks do add a lot of weight yeah and it's what you're dealing with if you're building cabinets from the ground up basically from your starting where you're then you measure build, build whatever you, you want, <laughs> right. but for us it was what was here and we managed to make this work and, and it was neat that the center blocks ended up being the right size for the court doors. Right. So you could build something if you wanted, but this was a quick way to stick something up to organize your stuff quickly.
We're getting ready to restock it uh, hopefully in the next few months once we start getting the garden going. So this is our, I guess, walk-in refrigerator. We call uh, it the Coolbot. Coolbot. Um, basically, it's a, it's a room that we created out of a space in our garage. Basically framed it in, put two two-inch layers of insulation, so four inches of insulation all throughout it, uh, along the walls and the ceiling. Uh, it's a concrete floor. Um, could have built it up to insulate it better, but it does the does the job. And and basically, it's just a a window AC unit that we have up there, and you can see a device off to the, the top right of it that's called a, a Coolbot. Uh, it's a rather simple thing. You can order them online, but it's, it's basically tricking the AC unit into cooling it down more than it would. You can see on the AC unit, it's set to 60. That's just because that's as low as that window unit will go. Uh, but the Coolbot itself is set to about 40, so it says 41 degrees right now, and that's actually what the temperature is in here. Um, so it it does a good job of keeping this, this place cool, so it's a, a good place to store the, the fruits and veggies as they're coming off until we're able to, to either eat them or can them or do whatever we want to do with them. Um, it's also a great place for storing perishables as well. We buy a lot of food in bulk, so I keep all our dried fruit in here, our rice, our nuts, pastas, any uh, beans, um, oats any of the things that could go bad um, that helps with them being stored at a cooler temperature. And then with stuff that could go rancid as well, we do do some of the vacuum and packing that I don't go through as quickly. Stuff that we go through quickly, we just keep in the five gallon buckets and you don't need to vacuum pack, stuff like that. But if you buy in bulk, you save so much money. And the hard part is, is making sure you have a space that can um, keep it either frozen or cool enough that it doesn't go bad. Yep. But these shelving units have worked great, and when all the produce, tomatoes, and greens start coming off, it gives you time to be able to get a quantity of them before you put them up. So it's worked really well for storage. Yeah. One of the nice things, too, is that we were able to hook this up to the solar. Um, so the solar powers this, as well as our two freezers. Um, just, you know, if the grid goes down, then we still have at least power to keep the, the food okay. Um, as long as we have the solar power and the batteries are running, then, then this should be running just fine. Right. We had talked about putting in a root cellar. It was between doing either a walk-in refrigerator or a root cellar, and it was a hard decision trying to figure out which one to put our money towards. But when we put the solar in, we realized we could go ahead and do this. The only thing that we can't really have in here is the potatoes, which would be because it can't be with the apples. Right. Um, so well, Root cellar would be nice would. at some point because then you're not, you know, you're not requiring any electricity at all to, for that kind of thing. It's just, it also would be a whole lot more work than it was just to frame in a, a room like this. But right. we, we could at some point dig out a small root cellar, but um, for the time being, I think this is it works great. enough of a project. <laughs> I just want to thank you guys. Thank you, oh, Ryan. Thank you, Liz, for taking the time to show us Definitely. around your property. And we really appreciate it. I had a great time. And we had a great time having oh, yeah. you here. Oh. Absolutely. Hopefully you can come back at some point. Uh, we're learning a lot through it all, and we've made many mistakes and more to come, I'm sure. But it's fun, and we look forward to learning from others, too. You know, and I think that's just exactly it, that while we go through these experiences, life is a journey. You're always learning. There's always things that you can learn, and some things you regret. You make some mistakes, and you think, ah, wish we would have done this differently. But don't give up because things don't go perfectly. You can grow as you go. You can learn as you're moving along. And if you like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notifications. God bless and have a fantastic day.